He has a 1-1 count. That one struck high. Left side. That one's going. That's right here. Off the side. You have to be kidding me. Oh, here you go. Welcome one and welcome all inside a special edition of High and Tight State Tournament Edition. And this is brought to you by the great folks at the Log Cabin Greek Steakhouse in Galena, Iowa. Uh, if you if you want fantastic food, all you got to go do is head on over to Galena, Iowa. Fantastic place. And hey, great people there as well. Uh, but again, it's the show that we are finally at state, right? We finally we're here. We're excited. The state tournament's kicked off. I mean, there's been a lot of energy that has gone through both Carol and, of course, here and where, we, where I am anyway in Rapid City. A lot of good things, and we're going to go ahead and break down a lot of that. We're going to take a look at uh, what's coming on up here as we progress through the state tournament, as we continue to go on here. And, uh, you know, I got my I got myself with me as well, but, of course, uh, Kate and Alex joining us here as well as we get going and keep going through this. And, uh, again, we're going to give you what oh, what's going to – come up here in the next uh, next slate here what's coming up next we know what's happened let's kind of preview what's going to happen and we're going to start with the 1a scene uh we're going to do 1a 3a here today this time around is uh we're wrapping up here with 4a in a little bit so you know it makes it interesting thanks for all the rain <laughs> but as we continue on here again uh, i got alex and Kate joining me here and Let's dive into the 1A scene. And Alex has been there, done that. Uh, absolute electric energy there, man. I think uh, one thing I'm for sh I'm jealous of is that you guys got to play regularly scheduled baseball. Uh, that is one has to be fun. But this has got to have been one of the, again, more energetic crowds as well. You got a lot of teams that uh, are haven't been there for a little bit yet any anyway, but Ultimately, what's the energy like? What does the feel like here from Carol? Uh, it's it's crazy. I mean, when you when you have a, a place like Merchants Park, um, you know, you have the old fashioned grandstands. You know, the big that it allows the audience to just all kind of be together, close knit, um, directly behind the plate like that too. I mean, some of the crowd pops that you hear coming out of that place for you know, these small 1A schools that are probably bringing, you know, all 800 people that live in their towns. <laughs> and it's, I mean, you know, when, when something happens, you know. Oh man. And uh, you know what you got, I, I will say some of the more exciting things that, have, that I've seen in state tournament action. I, gosh, I'm, I am jealous to a certain degree because I have never once seen a walk off squeeze bunt in my, in the state tournament. And what did we get here? Uh, you got that. You got that right away. You got the chance to have a lot of fun with those games here. But um, yeah, it's it seems as though one A came to play here. I mean, my goodness, was there ever a point in which anybody sat down at this thing? Because this it was electric all the way from the first game. It was. I mean, all of the games were, it, it depends what kind of baseball fan you are. I know a lot of people now are kind of more offensive minded, but um, me, I've always been a big fan of pitching, um, a big fan of defense. There were not a lot of runs scored in these first three games, only 11 total runs total. And, you know, between the first three games, but I mean, it's, if, if you're a fan of the defense, you're a fan of the pitching. I mean, coming out on the first day of the state tournament, you're more than likely going to see each team's ones and, you know, it's it's a different kind of electric when when you get to see those guys go on the mound and just do their thing, and then not to mention you've got a lot of sound gloves behind them. So it's, I mean, it's fun baseball. It's good baseball. It's has not been disappointing yet this year. And you know what? One thing that I was very happy with, I'll, Alex. I'll be honest here. I am an Akron Westfield alum, so. It really it warmed my heart a little bit to see AW continue to rock on here. Um, and now they get to face, I mean, it, it, everything's gone chalk, you know, so it, it, we get 
four of the top teams. There, there really wasn't much uh, in the way of upsets here as we go forward here. But let's take a look at what's coming up here uh, again from Merchants Park. And it's A.W. Ackham Westfield, A.W. L.S., Lindell Sully going up here. And um, I wanted to get just one, get your take on what this game might look like, you know, from – you know, Akron standpoint, what they had, what you know, three one-run games previously, and uh, this was one where they they came out on top of. And the Linville Sully, you know, they haven't had too many games that they've been held to three runs or less. So, uh, is our you you mentioned pitching and defense being one of the things you like to watch? It almost seems like we're set up for that again. What could we see? What's what? What is going to be the outlook here that you think is going to happen here in this game? Yeah, no, I agree with you. I think I think this is going to be another another low scoring, you know, pitchers duel, defensive battle, however you want to say it. I know um, Linville Sully used uh, Connor Mastin a little bit on Monday night, kept him under thirty, I believe it was for Monday, so he'll be able to go full today. I would be incredibly shocked if he doesn't get the start for Linville Sully. Um, Akron Westfield, I noticed just a very defensively sound team. Doesn't seem like they make a lot of mistakes. You know, don't don't allow a lot of extra bases, a lot of extra runners, extra runs. Um, I think, you know, like you said, I think this will be another defensive battle, another, you know, pitcher's duel. Alex, too, I loved in your uh, interview with, with Lucas Seek, he basically told you that, that Carson's going on, on you know, tonight. He, he said he's going to be ready. He's going to be good to go. So I love – Linville Sully, I mean, they're not afraid to show their hand. They know they know what they're gonna do, and they're just kind of throwing it at you and saying, "Hey, like this is up to you to beat now." So I, I just I love that idea, and I think it's so cool that Linville Sully was was here last year, and and they've got that experience, and this is where they fell last year in a, in a one nothing just just heartbreaker two one one nothing. It was something like that. So. This is the this is the hump they got to get over. So it's it's gonna be fun to see, and and they're playing a team that you know, hasn't been here in a, in a handful of years. So it's a, it's a cool contrast and, and two teams that are, are definitely among the top four in class one, a, uh, wouldn't you say, Andrew, I mean, we've been following these guys all year and th- these are yeah. two of the best uh, in this, in this entire state. And they've been mainstays in our top fives all year. It, it's been true. This has been, this is exciting to watch, right? You didn't get the upsets like you saw in, in two a and a little bit in the other classes. I mean, this is, you know, in the end, man, these they've been dogging it. They've been uh, Akron Westfield has been the highest riser out of anybody. I mean, from unranked, I believe, to number one, Linville Sully on the opposite. They've been near the top, and they've stayed that way. So this is this is where you really want to start ponying up that money for that ticket to this game, right? This this is honestly for me and Alex. I want to get your take too. Just this is a state t- title game worthy game for me. I mean this. I think these two teams, unfortunately, they have to see each other now. But if they ever saw each other in the state title game, I would not be disappointed. No, I one thousand percent agree. I mean, you look at you look at the way that you know, both of these teams are able to hit. First of all, I mean, both teams, you know, with a a team batting average of well over three hundred, um, looks like. Uh, I can get my stuff right here, Linville Sully a team batting average 361 and then you have Akron Westfield looking, you know, well above 350 as well. And then you look at both team ERAs, both team ERAs, you know, sub sub twos, not a lot, not, or both teams don't allow a lot of runs. Both teams hit the ball very well. This, this could very well, I agree, be, you know, your quote unquote championship game. Yeah. Oh man. And again, unfortunately we have to see them, early but at least we get to see it right this is a matchup that we at all a lot of us probably didn't think we wanted but we get and we like and uh speaking about another big matchup here coming on up well it's gonna be a dogfight here in the first game of the day between newman catholic rems and saint mary's uh wow this is i i you know i haven't seen these two teams face off very a lot in fact uh not a lot have. I think this is just the second time that these two teams have faced off. Um, Rems and uh, Remsen have kept it close. Newman, I think, has edged them both games, if I'm not mistaken, in, in those two ones. But, you know, it, it it's funny, Alex. I, I You talked about, and I love how you uh, brought it up here across the day yesterday, the other day, and, and everything that was going on. This, uh, 
the lightning struck here for Remsen. Uh, and I want to talk on uh, them here first, but they, they really struck hot. And it just seems like this is a team that, I don't know about you, but it seems like this is a team that wants to strike early. You know, everyone talks about get out of the gates early. I mean, this is a team that seemingly does that. I mean, what? I mean, they scored most of their runs, if not all their runs, in the first three innings, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, all 10. They had 10 total runs, all, you know, all 10 of them in the first three innings. You know, they gave up two early in the top of the first there and came back and answered a six. I mean, this team, they've been here before, obviously. Um, you know, returning champs from last year. I was able to watch them last year. It's su- very, very fun team to watch. And and one of the best parts about it is they're not, they're not an old team. They have two seniors on the entire roster. I mean, it's a, it's a wow. younger squad. They have... They have experience, like they've been here before, but not experience in the fact that, you know, they have those big senior leaders that, you know, have been able, you know, that have been carrying them for the last three or four years. And Alex, Alex, that, that home run, I believe the only home run hitting in class 1A in the quarterfinals, Hunter Pick, uh, give us a, mm-hmm. give us a sense, you know, you're, you're at Merchants Park. That's a, that's a big park for high school parks to go in yard. There is not easy. Kind of, kind of, uh, you know, explain that to the people, if you can, that this, this is no ordinary park. It, it's built for the alleys. It's built for doubles and triples. It's not built for home runs, but he still found a way to, to get it out. Well, as, and, and, and you know, that just as well as I do. I mean, we both <laughs> played there for four or five years, you know, growing up in high school, but I will say, as soon as that ball was hit, I, I, yeah, I, I knew it. I mean, I knew it. He knew it. I think you know all fifteen hundred, two thousand people there knew it too. I mean, that's one of the one of the better hit balls I think I've seen in 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 high school baseball. And it's and it, and and again, like I mentioned before, you know, you get a crowd that's that tight packed, that close knit, and those grandstands get pretty darn loud when you get something like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Again, one of the best atmospheres, and I'm so glad that the Iowa High School Athletic Association kept it there and looks to keep it there. It's a great venue, and yeah, I, 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 Remsen did a heck of a job. In fact, I believe they have what six over 60 percent of their offense has scored in in the first three innings. And gosh, you were off to an electric start again. Really jealous that you got to do it on time. You didn't have to wait through rain delays, but nonetheless. Uh, the battle here against for Remsen will be against Newman Catholic here, Alex. And I, gosh, they it seemed methodical for them. They did what they needed to do. Um, it kind of it almost uh, stinks in a sense because I think this was, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. It looked like one of the better pitching matchups when all was said and done between uh, really two great pitchers and uh, two great pitching staffs here. Unfortunately, someone had to come out on top. Someone had to lose. But you know it. Uh, Malachi O'Brien, man, talk talk to us about him. He he matched everything that Streeter did for South Wind and then some. I mean, uh, he really went the distance player of the game, and rightfully so. What would you see out of him? I mean, he's just a workhorse. You can tell, you know, as soon as he gets on the bump, you can just – the way that he works, the way he just kind of methodically goes through his at-bats and attacks his hitters and – it's just it's it's really fun to watch, especially from you know somebody who is a former pitcher. I think I enjoy pitching a little bit more than than other people might. But just when when you get a guy up there and and he just gets on the mound, and he's confident, and not to mention he got in a little trouble in the beginning too, and really yeah. settled in very nicely. It you know it's 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 really fun to watch for you know somebody who enjoys that aspect of the game. Yeah, I was I was going to ask you about that, Alex. I mean, a sophomore starting in, in a state quarterfinal game. It, I mean, just looking at the stat line, obviously I didn't watch six hits and five walks. So it's it, it seemed like there was some traffic on the bases, uh, but obviously he was able to get out of it pretty clean. Only one earned run. Uh, how did you see his like composure in those moments where where you know runners on scoring position, runners on first? You know how how do he handle those moments in a tight game where one swing and 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 everything changes? So, but he, it seemed like he did a pretty good job. Yeah, I mean, he just like, you know, he was, you know, he's a, he's a pretty, um, you know, electric, you know, pit kid as far as like, you know, he's kind of wearing his emotions right on his sleeve there. You know, you could see, you know, kind of the, he'd get upset every now and then, you know, something bad would happen and it's okay. Think about it now, move on. Think about it now, move on. You know, like it's happened. You can't do anything about it. Go make the next play, go get the next guy out, you know, go do something to, 
you know, to erase that. And that's exactly what he did too. You know, like you said, a lot of traffic on the bases, only one earned run. And yeah, it was, it's, it's really fun to watch the way he just was able to, you know, go through that adversity, get through it, settle in, and then just to continue to come back and fight and, and do it for a squad. Man, I, I gotta love that. And again, again, that uh, picks up quite the milestone. I mean, what their 40th state tournament win and it comes as it puts them wow. into into the into the semifinals, and you know, and you know, kudos to Remsen as well. Their twentieth state tournament win. So I think we're just finding milestone victories all over the place here. I mean, again, a, another reason to want to be in Carroll to catch these games for sure. No doubt, no doubt. I can't wait. It's it's going to be fun. I mean, in two two competitive games and like the semifinals, you think these guys are down to the number two. So you're thinking more runs are going to be scored. But most of these teams are here because they have one, two punches built for this type of stuff. So you might think, oh, there's going to be more runs. And I'm going to expect more than like two, nothing, three, one. But I mean, th these number twos are, are winning tough games. And these are the guys that won tough games of the postseason, uh, Andrew. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, we got a good idea of, of who's throwing with Fitzsimmons and Waldschmidt and, and, and Mason. And, you know, like, we got a good idea. And these guys are all quality arms, and they're capable of going and shutting out good offenses. And, and all these offenses are, are, are just as equally matched. So it's this is fun. 1A, you don't get the top four teams in the semifinals every year, but I really feel like we've got – four of the top five te or four of the top teams in this, in this semifinal field ready to roll. So, I mean, I'm excited, Alex. I know you're excited. It's going to be electric under the lights, Merchants Park, uh, semifinal Wednesday. I mean, it, it's going to be a ton of fun. Hopefully staying out of the rain too. Unlike you guys. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> that was mean. That was mean. Let's get him out of here. Let's get him out of here. Nope. We're, we're off to <laughs> We're off to yeah, 3 a. <laughs> Another delay, another delay. We're <laughs> <laughs> here laughing to each other. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, Alex, um, we appreciate you for, for hopping in. Um, it, 1A should be a ton of fun. We'll be back on, on Friday for 1A fans for the for the squad that makes it. Uh, tomorrow, obviously, 2A, 4A. So, 2A fans, if you're tuning in, we'll catch Alex. Um, but yeah, Alex, we appreciate you uh, helping IA baseball. People probably don't know that I, Alex has been there. He's he's just helping us now. He hasn't been with us all year. So uh, if you see him there, go see what's up. Uh, you know, he loves talking baseball and he loves talking pitching. So it uh, should be a ton of fun. Alex, uh, thanks for joining us and uh, have fun at Merchants Park at, at a dry Merchants Park tonight, hopefully. <laughs> Absolutely, will do. I'll, I'll try to pray, pray the rain away for you guys today. So, <laughs> All, right. All right. See you later, Alex. Yeah. Oh, shoot. He's lucky, man. He's lucky. Yeah. But, oh, shoot. I mean, we appreciate him. He hasn't been with us all year, so it's tough for him, you know, covering these teams that he doesn't know a ton about. But, but he's a baseball mind, and, and he's good at, at just going with the flow. So he's done a great job. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's helping us out a ton, him and Nate Castillo. So if you see Nate down there, he's the one with the big – Big camera, go say what's up. I mean, they're they're helping us out a ton and getting pictures for you guys. So, uh, very cool stuff and and super grateful for them. But Andrew, three A, yeah. I think the big story here, um, Waller Catholic obviously having to play a game a day late. Uh, it, it's a big yep. deal with the pitch count, but at the end of the day, I don't know what else was supposed to happen. I mean, it, it's just it is what it is, and, and it's how the it's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. And here we are. I mean, and they they got the, they found a way to get it done. Uh, Waller Catholic, Bishop Heelan, Marion, North Polk. What was your kind of biggest takeaway from from the quarterfinals? There was a lot because I mean it was all, yeah. it was all pretty good games. Even the even the run rule was a good game. Yeah, and you know it, it's interesting. You mentioned I, I'll go with Waller the Waller win there as well. You know that was there. There was a lot that goes into that, and you know ultimately, wow, yes, it kind of puts Waller in a pinch. I mean, because honestly, beforehand it was. The one number one seed played early. You know, you got, yeah. you got to play yeah. early. And if that was the case, we wouldn't have that kind of situation here. Because right now what you have, Bodie Regopoulos, arguably their number one, he went four pitches over the count and cannot throw if they make it to Friday. So yeah. that's that kind of puts them in a bind. And plus, Brandon Cummer, their number two or one B, however you want to say it, he looked, he got injured a little bit in the game, in that game. Yeah. He ended up getting a chance to get back up, but coach really wasn't sure exactly what 
would what it would look like here. So it's still up in the air on to what, who's going to end up pitching that game. So that that's a big storyline in itself. Obviously, Wallard has a lot of dudes who can go out there, and I, and I think their defense is just as stellar. But uh, the one other thing that really was cool to think about, and I love how how it works this way and, and how Waller does this, uh, the guy who scored the winning run was set to be their starting shortstop for three years straight now, but he's had three season-ending injuries which have prevented him from swinging the bat, let alone throwing the ball. So he has been – hes the guy's a stud, and he just hasn't been able to get out there and – provide all that we that we wanted to see from him so it was really cool that he ended up getting the the run to punch the ticket to advance and so again really a cool story there so if you get the chance everybody check that out and uh, yeah, we, that's we cool got, yeah it, it's just really cool so make sure to check that out but uh, we got the interview on facebook uh, it's a longer one so obviously the rest of them couldn't take it but you know uh, I also thought, man, you're you're right here, Kate. The ten run rule game w- uh, between Marion and CPU. I just think that that that's not indicative of the real the real game that was. I mean, ultimately that game was down. It was the fifth inning, which the seven run fifth inning ended up uh, doing it in. But gosh, uh, I think the biggest thing here is Marion's been a, a team to hit extra base hits when they need to. And they did it again here. You know, ultimately they had 11 hits in the entire thing. They kept putting pressure on and they had a leadoff guy on in every inning. So they kept on doing that. Great teams continually put pressure on and it it doesn't allow for an easy inning. Nobody can catch their breath after the third or the second. You know, it's it's uh, Marion just kept putting them on. And, you know, I, I will say that. You know, CPU had a fantastic year, but man, uh, Marion advancing. I think uh, I think they're they're a tough out for sure. No doubt. Uh, I mean, I, I like the story of Healing. I mean, they win two run one run games to get here. Yeah. They play another tight tight game, and now they get the likes of of Caleb Lefavor. I mean, the, a sophomore riser. Uh, you know, uh, one of the one of the bigger names in that sophomore class, and he gets a shot against Waller Catholic in the top overall seed. Obviously, Waller Catholic, a lot of questions as to who's going, but you know, whoever they're they're gonna throw is quality. They got they got plenty of guys ready to go. I think that's a, a super intriguing matchup. And then the story with with North Polk is just a, an incredible one. That that team was absolutely tested in North Polk. I feel like they, it feels like they've been tested so many times. I mean, uh, ADM, they're down early. Algona, yep. they're down early. Harlan, they're down late. I mean, they, they the lead slipped away. And in all three of those games, they just find a way. And I mean, the Cardiac Comet nickname, that, that's no joke. This team is <laughs> this team has made their fans probably lose some hair over the last few weeks because of how stressful it's been. And, and, and you know, this, this team has shown that no matter how many outs they got left, I mean, they, they got – just an equal shot to get it done. And I know you did some digging on, uh, on Fajalan and, and the, the, the walk-off hit. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty cool story too. Yeah. Well, I mean, his dad is right around the record for home runs, if not the home run record holder for the program. And, you know, I was talking to coach afterward and, you know, there was this kind of sly unspoken joke, you know, man, if he can hit, uh, hit a deep one or hit one out and gosh, the, the kid steps up and I, that, Gosh, that's the most pressure-packed situation you can ever have. You know that that's a true testament to who has got who has got uh, you know who has got it right. Who's got the guts? Who has got the stuff to go? And obviously, man, what a what a big hit that was. And you know, talking to him after the game, you go, man, it was a little bit in the back of his head, but uh, certainly he was just looking to go out there and and win it for the team. But oh my gosh, uh, what a strike! And and he needed that. That was the that was pretty much the only hit in which he could have secured the win like that. But yeah, familial tie, and you know, uh, you know, father and son get to kind of bond over this a little bit here. So, I, yeah. I think that that was a cool story. Yeah, I mean, nine guys in the field for North Polk, uh, all juniors and seniors except for him, uh, sophomore playing third base. He's 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 the the future of the Comets. I mean, he's he's going to be a, a staple in that lineup once all these all these big names depart so having that you know kind of kind of tied your name and being able to, being able to 
being able to come up clutch as an underclassman and a team full of upperclassmen is is pretty cool, and that's a uh, you know an incredible story. Uh, but looking at tonight's uh, semis, Marion North Polk, North Polk, uh, you can assume Hunter Cook pretty pretty safely that he's going to be going. Yeah. Marion's a little bit more of a. Uh, they're a little bit more of a pitcher pitching by committee. Uh, I think they like a lot of guys. They've got a lot of guys with a lot of innings. So me comfortably, I'm not yeah. even I'm not even confident who I'd peg to go through. I mean, uh, Andrew Amon started four games. Cody yeah. Cody Johnson started eight. Peyton Hodges has started six. Uh, it, it, they could really go a lot of ways they wanted to. And if one of them gets in trouble, they got two to three guys right behind them that I bet they're very comfortable going into this game and, and throwing innings. So a little bit of a, a yin and yang type thing here. Uh, what are you kind of looking for? Marion North Polk. Uh, what do you see in, in the nightcap tonight? Oh man, this is, this is going to be a fun matchup in the end. These two teams haven't faced off against each other. So we really don't have much of a reference base, right. To go from, but, um, you know, they've been, you know, they've been on point again. I, I think an X factor here, uh, beyond what we, you know, from Trey Frank, uh, Grayson Kirsch as well. He had a triple in that game in game one. And that's, that's the big key. You know, if, yeah, uh, who, who gets that extra base hit right now, because we have now advanced past ACE as well. And, you know, in some cases, some teams in the three A scene have had to, uh, kind of adjust their mark a little bit here i know that we've had some rain outs and uh so marion's had to kind of wait and they've had to adjust so uh, in the end you know and they didn't necessarily get a, a fair shake of it either and so uh they they have a a bunch to work with i i'm not sure on the pitch count exactly here for uh you know as i try and bring that up here but uh as for marion looking at the pitch count uh, nobody went over 50 pitches, right? So I mean, technically you can't have uh, you can't have Goodrich back, but you can get him for later. You know, Peyton Hodges, I think he's the guy that uh, that came in. So I, yeah, from Amon to Hodges, I think you got two guys there that could do it. Um, in the end, yes, this is this is going to be a battle where how can how early can you get out to the races? You know, in this against CPU, both Marion and CPU two runs in the first two innings. So uh, that sets the tone and whoever gets out of here, because pitching is going to really, I think, dominate the end of the game. So how early can you get out to the lead is going to be big. And uh, that's, I, I'm expecting that. I'm expecting teams to be aggressive. Uh, you know, we, both these teams are very aggressive on the base pass. Marion, one of the top 15, uh, they have, it's going to be a fun one for sure. I think that we're not going to be shy of some really good, uh, good firepower in this game. Yeah. And Angel, I can't help but think back to last year. This is what we kind of pegged as the semifinal match. I think it would have been North Polk and Marion, but then Carla yeah. obviously played a little bit of a, a Cinderella and, and threw the slipper on it and took out Marion in the, in the quarterfinal. I mean, not a huge upset, but still one that, that I don't think I, I, I pegged. And uh, so, so here we go. North Polk, Marion. Uh, these are definitely two top four teams in, uh, in class three, a, and then the top half Helen. Uh, maybe not, they haven't been in the top four all year long, but this is a, a quality team, 33 wins, 10 losses. This is a team that's well-deserving, super high on their pitching. Uh, again, yep. probably, probably LeFever, you can assume Waller Catholic, uh, a bit, a little bit more of a question mark, uh, on Comer's health, but I mean, obviously hoping the best for him. Uh, he's an incredible arm. They, they got JP Elbert behind him in, in a, in a plateau of guys. Uh, so, you know, what, what are you seeing here? I I'm, I'm thinking same kind of thing. Get out the gates hot. Cause you never know yeah. when you could scratch one across. Well, and yeah, I, you, you have to, right. We've already seen that, you know, Wallard is one of, they've had the third toughest strength of schedule in this in three a, and I was close to the state. Uh, but ultimately yeah, they, and they went, I, they went all the way to the very end just to, uh, just to win on a walk off on a one, nothing win there. So what does that tell you? I mean, they, even they can be stifled offensively and Bishop Helan, like you mentioned, they had to have nine, eight runs, and they're like prior two games just to get here. So if you got to go out, both of these teams, you know, uh, of course, Heelan, uh, two of their three runs came in the first three innings. So they needed to make that happen. That's how they helped secure the win for themselves. So, uh, you know, in the end, uh, the, the matchup between these programs, I mean, you have to go back to what, 2017 to the last time they faced off against each other. 
ultimately, this is the tiebreaker here, Cade. Both teams three and three. You know, Waller took the last game, but uh, yeah, I, I think that you have to come out swinging. Um, in the end, what did we saw out of uh, out of Waller? I mean, how many stolen bases did they get there? And so, uh, quick swipe bags. Uh, Bishop Heelan, the same thing. Bishop Heelan, number two in the in three A in stolen bases. So for me, it's not only get out of the gates early, but how do you do on the base paths? You know, we saw yesterday in some 4A games how crucial base running mistakes were in a, in a win or go home scenario. So who can stay onto the base paths more? Who can get there? And it, it may seem like I'm uh, doing the same old stick here, but in, in the end, you got to get out early and you've got to find a way to stay on the base paths. These are two of the top teams in doing so. These are two of the top extra base hitting teams in 3A. We got ourselves a ride here for us. And I, I like where we're headed in the end. Whoever comes out of this, yeah, you're going to be battle tested going into the state title game. 126 and 30 is the combined record uh, for all the semifinal teams. We don't, there's no Cinderella in this field. These are, <laughs> these are top dogs clashing. And don't forget, fans, we do have a game at two o'clock. Uh, we got the final quarterfinal game. So if you're a 3A fan and uh, you're chilling in Cedar Rapids and you're just hanging out, come down, check out the game. I mean, Andrew, I just, before we do leave, I, I got to give a shout out. I mean, I know the weather has not been great, but. I personally, I love, I love Veterans Memorial Stadium, Colonel's Veterans Memorial Stadium. Yep. I think, I think this is an incredible spot. Um, I know the association is going to be getting some flack just because of the weather, but at the end of the day, you can't control that. But what you can, what you can control uh, is this park, and I've, I've really enjoyed it. I think this is a, um, this is a cool home for for a year. I know there's going to be questions with the scheduling with minor league baseball and everything, but. I gotta say, I'm I'm impressed with this park, and I, I really like it being here. I, I feel like this is a good good spot for three A four A. Yeah, it is. You know, a lot of similarities to Principal Park, and just a great venue. Uh, great to all to us, you know, being able to cover that and being able, to, of course, love Dwayne Banks Field. You know, it does it has holds a special place in all our hearts. But man, was is this something special or what? And kudos to the grounds crew. Yes, who made it possible for us just to get games. Uh, yes, you had the rain delays, but again, like you said, can't, you know, can't fight that off. What you can do is get the field prepped and ready. So, uh, whatever they're paying those guys there, uh, they might want to start doubling that because they did an absolute great job, got us back running and, uh, they had to do it twice and, you know, just stopped raining now here. So, uh, you know, I'm sure they're doing uh, it again, uh, you know, so <laughs> they, they've been on it. They've been on it. Yeah, let's let's hope it stays away. I mean, uh, I don't even want to look at the radar. I'm just gonna show up and 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 hope for the best. <laughs> but no, I, I mean, the good thing is you got the cover. Like in Dwayne, everyone would have been just been sitting out in the rain. So uh, this is a good spot for us this year. I really do feel like that, and we've got some fun games. So uh, shout out to the Log Cabin. Uh, we appreciate them for 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 having us. That's that's a huge get supporting IA baseball. Uh, very cool and allows us to keep doing what we do. Andrew, any final thoughts before we? rest up and uh get ready for tonight uh man just be prepared for a lot more good stuff uh just because we get deeper into the pitching staffs doesn't mean we're not going to get more excitement i mean there's going to be a lot of good offense a lot of good defense and um yeah shout out to yeah like you said log cabin a greek steakhouse phenomenal uh they they're just phenomenal people there and uh they do a great job so I'm, I know I'm going to head down there as soon as I get the chance, and I hope everyone else should too. It's a great time, but we're going to have a great time here. Make sure to tune in. Love it. Let's go. See you guys later.